Hello and welcome back. Uh, and in today's video, we're going to look at picking a lock um, that I've not picked on the channel before. But don't get too excited. It's not a high security lock, although at the time I bought it, I thought it was. Uh, let me just give you a little bit of backstory before I got into lock sport. Um, I had need for a short period of time to store some valuables at my house and wanted somewhere secure to put them. So I kind of went out shopping for a little safe. Um, as I said, I didn't know much about locks, um, but so I went into what I thought was a reputable store, which probably is a reputable store. Um, and they were locksmiths and security sort of experts. And they had a range of safes and they had some real high end ones with high price tags and they had some real low ones. And I kind of wanted to go somewhere in the middle. I probably went kind of towards the cheaper end of the middle uh, with this particular safe. And you kind of get what you pay for, really. I mean, it's it's probably okay for you know low security applications, and it was probably okay for what I was storing at the time. Um, but I thought it was a real secure safe at the time. Let's bring it out. We can have a look at it. So it doesn't quite fit into the picture. Let's just give you a spin around. There's no actual brand marks on this. I've long since lost the receipt, and I don't know what the model is. Um, it is actually really heavy. Um, and it's all secured with this lock here. If I just open it up, it's got quite a heavy door and you can probably just see there, kind of out of focus. You've just got these uh, two uh, locking pulls on there, which secure the door. Uh, but what we're interested in today is looking at this lock. So the type of lock it is, is a cross lock which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. But if you're not, um, it's kind of, a, it looks like that. It's kind of uh, cross-shaped. Let me just look at the profile there. And seemingly, as you look at it, it's got um, four rows of bitting uh, all the way around it. And the lock itself has that cross profile, which is why it's called a cross lock or a cruciform lock. Um, so, yeah, we're going to... I say it's got four rows of bit in. When you look at the pins, I mean, it, if you count the the dips are what you're counting when you're looking at a lock and trying to find the pins. So we've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So if you look at the cuts, you'd assume that you've got four pins per side, uh, which is you know 16 pins, which makes you think it's pretty secure. Um, but cruciform locks or cross locks are notoriously low security. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this set up where you can see what I'm doing and we can see what it takes to open this particular lock. Uh, I tried a couple of times to get the um, the safe in frame and so you could see the the lock but it just really wasn't working out so I thought in the end it's probably easier to just disassemble it which is fairly straightforward. Um, so we've got, you've got this little dot up here which marks the top and then you've got this little notch on the key and that way uh, when you put it in that way it operates the lock and if you try to put it in a different way with that notch not matching up with the key it won't open so we'll fix him in the vise oh, actually we just have a quick look at the pins now surprisingly when i've got it like this you can actually see that there are four sets of pins I don't know if you can see there but we do have four sets of pins but after having a little play with this um, I know that not all of them are active, so let's see what it takes to get this open. In theory, these cross locks should be reasonably secure um, because you'd have to pick, as I said in the beginning, you have to pick each row of pins uh, to get it picked. I don't know if there's a more secure version of these, but all of the ones that I've seen videos of or come across are all kind of these really cheap, nasty Chinese uh, locks, and they all seem to fall open pretty easily. So let's zoom you in. Oh, not quite that close, right about there. I think first of all, I'm just gonna get a tensioner in, um, I guess that's the sort of 11 o'clock position. Uh, and I've got this wave rake uh, from Multipick. Which one is it? It's the V73. So a little bit of tension, and we'll just give these pins just a little bit of a wiggle. Did it turn? Yeah, it did turn. I wasn't sure because actually on the front, you've got this little kind of rotating uh, disc there. I'm not sure what that does, but it does turn because now I can't get the key in. So in order to 
be able to get the key in and operate the lock again, we've got to unpick it from its locked position. So I'm going to put it back in that one there. And I'm just going to jiggle the pins on this side and this side and this side. So let's try that. Oh, didn't quite get in there. That was the uh, spinny disc. I just touched touched it on that side and we're back into the locked position. Uh, yeah, so he's locked again now and he works. So that tells me that the rows of pins on this side and this side might be active, but the bottom ones and the top ones are not active at all. Let's see if we can do that again. I'm just going to do these side ones this time. Tell you what we will do actually rather than doing that again is we'll we could perhaps try a single pin picking it so i've got this little hook there get the tensioner in and we'll see what it takes to single pin picking i'm not being very careful here i'm just actually let me just sort that focus out for you there we go i'm just kind of wiggling that pick up and down in there I felt something move then. Give those other pins a tickle. That was just a tickle on the bottom bins. Uh, and we got that open again. And once again, we are not going to be able to turn that back without picking it. So let's see if we can just use the wave rate. I think last time I just tickled one of these pins down on this row. <laughs> there we go. That was brilliant. Uh, I like that. I wonder if we can open it uh, just by tickling those pins. Which one was it? was these ones nope yeah having played with it for a bit it seems you can it's <laughs> it's harder to unlock it i'll get it to the position where you know the lock turns to that position uh, than it is to actually uh, lock it back up again i don't really understand what what the reasoning behind that is I'd like to have a look in the lock and take it all apart, um, but then this safe wouldn't be usable if, if I ever did want to sell it. Um, it's not going to be usable. I'm just going to try and pick him again. I'm not going to play ball now. I think if I did take him apart, what we are going to find in there is some um, uh, really badly made and badly fitting uh, pins and pin chambers. And uh, yeah, it's not going to be too pretty at all. It doesn't want to rake now. Maybe I've got some of those pins stuck by abusing it with this wave rake. Is he going to just double check? It's still working. Yeah, it still works with a key. I think I've I have opened it just by doing this side and this side. I'm going to try just wiggling it around, tapping all of the pins. I think that's a good indication as well of a cheap lock is when you don't get consistency. Um, with a well-made lock, you know you do the same thing to it and it'll behave exactly the same. With a cheap lock. That's not necessarily the case. Come on. Really making me work for it now. I just wanted to unlock it again with that sort of single wave rake, you know. There we go. So we just got that turned. So he's in the locked position now again. Just confirm that the key that can't fit in. And we're just going to tickle the pins just on that side and see if that opens him up again <laughs> fantastic absolutely love that um i do like let's just try and zoom you out where, where are we there we go 
I do like embarrassing Jeep locks. It is a lot of fun. Um, I, I mean, it's, it kind of gets boring after a while, but I think when you're, you know, picking higher security locks and uh, going through your lock sport journey, it's a lot of fun sometimes to play with something cheap and kind of abuse it. So yeah, really interesting uh, pick that. And I can't, I, I kind of really want to open it up um, to see exactly what's going on in that. Because I can't quite understand how it's, you know, it's, quite tricky not not tricky you just got to wiggle away wave rake around in there for a little while um tricky to open it up but then when you're in that position you saw me three times in a row there all i did was just you know touch a pin on that side and it locked up uh, either way lots of fun to play with and it certainly um opened my eyes um as um when i first got into lock sport it opened my eyes how you can quite often rely on something uh, like this to secure your valuables um, and the good thing about Locksport and making these sorts of videos, I hope I hope to sort of you know show people um, that you shouldn't rely on uh, cheap locks. And certainly in a security system, you know like that safe, it's only as good as its weakest link, which in this case is this cross lock. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching today. I'm going to leave a little link up there to subscribe. That's always appreciated. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one.